Hm? Look, mom, no compressor. This video was brought to you by Incogni. So, I built this scrappy compressed air engine. I mean, I say it's scrappy, but it does run. Most of the time. It uses your standard crankshaft mechanism. The piston was cut by hand using a Dremel. That was tricky. It took a few tries until it fits snugly inside the cylinder, which is just a piece of acrylic tubing I cut to length. The connecting rod is a bit of brass tubing, the crank is a disc I cut out of acrylic, and the flywheel is a round chunk of MDF with nuts super glued to it. What? Super glue is useful. You might have noticed there's a nail on the piston. Well spotted. That is to open a very simple ball valve on the top. The pressured air coming from my compressor will naturally push the ball against this cute o-ring, which stops the air from flowing. But when the piston reaches the top and the nail pushes the ball up, a burst of air comes into the cylinder and pushes the piston down. This process repeats itself over and over and over again. This valve is pretty neat, isn't it? And it's the only part I 3D printed in this project. The rest of the parts were all done by hand. Kinda. Wait a second. I could probably 3D print this whole thing. I'll be right back. There you go. Oh yeah. We made it. Pendulo. Pendulo. Bam. So as you can see I'm using a ball joint, it's not even connected to the piston, uh, but because the compressed air is always pulling the piston down, it should keep them together. I'll give it a try and see if it works. Okay, uh, the final product is ready, I'll give it some air now. One, two, three. Oh, it wants to go. One, two, three. Why is it not going? It requires a lot of strength to lift the ball. Which makes sense because, I mean, to lift the ball I have to do the same force as the air pressure is pushing the ball down, which is quite a lot. I'm guessing it's not running because the design itself is a little bit crappy. Uh, it's my fault. I think I'm gonna go back to the simple design and try it again. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. This is the new design. Uh, it was printed in transparent resin, but as you can see, it's very black. The reason for that is I basically put graphite in every single part to decrease the friction. And as you can see, it worked pretty well. It runs for a while. The, the mechanism is the simple one that I used in the beginning. So let's give it a run and see if it goes. So the engine is running pretty well, which is nice, sounds like an actual engine, and that's probably because it's purely mechanic. The fact that it's purely mechanic is kind of a problem, because uh, it requires a lot of starting force, you really have to push it hard to start it. I was wondering if there's a better way, like a way with no friction or mechanical stress, and I think I have an idea. So I have these magnetic sensors and what they do is they open when they sense a magnet nearby. What if I put the sensor on top of the cylinder and a magnet on the piston? Okay, so I still don't have the air supply connected, but if I rotate this, you can hear that when the piston reaches the top, you can hear the electro valve opening. Can you hear that? The clicking? I'm gonna connect the air supply and give it a go. It's going! Oh! It's working so well! Okay, uh, it's working very well. It's really easy to start, but there's kind of a limit because if I increase the pressure too much, um, it basically shuts down because the electro valve has a speed limitation. Uh, but still, super easy to start and it works pretty well. I'm guessing it doesn't have a lot of torque or at least not as much as the other one. This little guy might have low torque, but it can run at very low pressures. I can show you. It can run at pressures lower than one bar. Let me just adjust it. It's going slow, but it still runs, which is amazing. My only real problem with this engine right now is that, well, 
If I want to put it on something like a car or an airplane, I can't really use my compressor because it's too heavy. I need to find a lighter reservoir. And do you know what's used to a lot of pressure and it's pretty light? A soda bottle. I mean, without the soda on it. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Okay, uh, the maximum my compressor can do is 8 bar, so, well, as long as it can take 8 bar, we're fine. Okay. Two bar, four bar, six bar, and that's the maximum. Nothing is happening. To everyone's disappointment, this didn't blow up. Oh, it's charged. Let me get the compressor off. Moment of truth. Let's see how long the engine runs without the compressor. A few moments later. Okay, that run for about what, one minute? Sponsor time. Whenever you're feeling down and you think you're not important, just remember, you might not be, but your information is. Data broker is someone that gets your information like your social security number, your browser history, your cat's name, your favorite anime. My name's Aruto, by the way, my cat's name, Aruto. They take your information and they sell it to other companies so they know what you want to buy. Is your feed showing a lot of ads about products you just mentioned in conversation? They are hearing. Protect yourself. With Incogni. Incogni reaches out to the data brokers and requests the removal of your personal information. Like, now. Please. And deals with any kind of objections they might have on their side. Create an account, grant them rights, and Incogni will deal with those filthy pirates. The first 100 people to use code INTAGZA at the link below will get 60% off Incogni at incogni.com slash INTAGZA. By clicking the link in the description down below, you're not just protecting yourself, but you're also helping this channel. And to that I have to say... I can't believe you've done this. Back to the video. This setup is working pretty well, and it's running for a decent amount of time. But I have a small problem. I charged the bottle with 6 bars, so at the beginning the engine runs very very fast. But by the end, it's basically running on fumes. There's a big difference between the beginning pressure and the end pressure. I want to keep a steady level of pressure. And to do that, I have an idea, which is to charge the bottle with two bars. And every single time the pressure goes below two bars, I charge it again. Now, how can I do that? Well, I have an idea. I'm thinking of using CO2 canisters. They are these little fire extinguishers that are used to fill up bike tires. Okay, so the last time we reached about 8 bars and it didn't blow up. Uh, I'm guessing this time we're gonna get it because, well, these cartridges, they have about 60 bars. So, I'll be really, really surprised if this doesn't blow up. Nothing? What? How is it not blowing up? Did it max out the pressure? is that 10 bar in is not exploding. I don't know how that's possible, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another one in. Now it's happening for sure. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, in my heart. Well, that was the detonation basically. An opening here. I, I'm calling it an opening, it's completely ripped apart. You can see stretch marks on the plastic. That's insane. These soda bottles, they can take pressure pretty well. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm gonna recycle this and keep on going with the video. So I'm using an Arduino to control everything and as you can see I'm displaying the pressure inside the bottle right here. And if I squeeze the bottle a little bit, you see the pressure goes up. Now, I wrote a little bit of code, so each time the pressure goes below two bars inside the bottle, I open this electro valve here and basically charge the bottle again. In this way, the pressure inside the bottle keeps itself at a constant level, and I think I'm gonna have a much longer running time. Let's give it a try. So I have all the hardware and electronics here. Uh, I'm gonna put a cartridge in and see for how long this engine can run. Oh, it's starting. And it's finally done. How long was that? At least three minutes. Three or? About, about three minutes. Wow, that's nice. Look at this all frosty. That's pretty cool.
This engine is running pretty well. I'm really happy with it. It's a new concept and for a first attempt, it's not too bad. But I think I can do better. And I have a deal in mind, which is you guys give me your ideas to improve on this design and I'll give a free 3D printer away. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comments suggesting a theme for a future video. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video or an improvement on the design. Also, you can get all the 3D models I used in the description down below. Um, well, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!